Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. Now tell me why Kamara and Russell Simmons' daughter Aoki Lee Simmons is dating this old man. She was on vacation at St. Bart's and she was caught kissing Victorio or Victorio Assoff. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he is the co-founder of the Serafina Restaurant Group and he's worth a lot of money. They say that he's worth nine figures. I don't know the exact amount, but he's rich according to some reports. And it seems like Aoki is snuggling up to this man because he might be her sugar daddy. Now, I don't know if he is or not, but it just seems like there's an exchange going on here and it don't got nothing to do with love. And Aoki's not claiming him either. She said that she doesn't have a boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. Well, since she doesn't have a boyfriend, we could conclude that maybe this guy is her sugar daddy. Now, I will say this whole age gap between them is very disgusting, even though they both are adults. I don't really understand why a man in his age group would be even looking at somebody like Aoki. Aoki is 21 and Vittorio is 65. He's old enough to be her grandfather. So I don't understand why a guy that old is even with somebody as young as Aoki. I think it's honestly inappropriate and it's creepy. It is. And it's really unfortunate because I do feel like Aoki is with him for the money. And this was something that she was taught by her parents. I mean, her mother, Kamora Lee Simmons, married Russell Simmons because he had money too. And what's sad is Russell preyed on Kamora when she was a teenager. She was in high school when she met Russell and Russell was in his 30s. She was literally groomed, literally. But she ended up falling for Russell because he had the money and power and he gave her the lifestyle that she desired. And it's obvious that Aoki is following in her mother's footsteps. Right now, the Simmons family are not as wealthy as they used to be. Russell's empire has gone downhill completely and he has been plagued with a lot of essay allegations and he had to leave the country to avoid getting charged. And Kimura also made some bad investments. So the family doesn't have the money that they used to have. So Aoki has to kind of find a way to make money. Also, another thing to add is she and her dad have a strained relationship and he cut her off financially. So now she has to find a way to get money on her own. He'll cut you off out of nowhere. He'll cut off your healthcare. He'll cut off your phone bill out of nowhere. Like you don't even, you'll be a minor just because you disagree or you say, don't call my mom all these names. I think the bottom line, like probably the breaking point for all of this was uh, over the past many months um, when their dad just sort of cut them off. Um, he was contributing a little bit of cash to their like monthly, you know, college. One day he just kind of cut the kids off. There was no more money coming in, no more like allowance, quote unquote allowance. I think he probably did that just to double up the expenses on me, which is no problem. I stepped up. I did it. I think that was a very, that was very tough for them that their dad like kind of cut them off and cut off conversation and cut off try helping them. And he's even said things to them like, why did you go to college? You shouldn't have gone to college. You wasted that money. You could have saved it while I'm up here trying to hustle the kids over the finish line. So this is what I'm talking about. Russell ain't giving his daughter any money and Kamora has money, but she doesn't have it like that. She still has to grind to help her children. So I think Aoki wants to relieve her mother's burden and get money from Victoria. Now, does she have to date a sugar daddy to do it? No, she doesn't. But I think she wants the lifestyle and she's following in her mother's footsteps to get that lifestyle. And it's not like she doesn't have anything going for herself. I mean, she is a Harvard graduate and a model, but that career and that degree is not gonna give her the lifestyle that she wants. Honestly, I think it's kind of sad, but it is her life at the end of the day. She could at least do better. You know what I mean? She could go a little younger and find somebody a little bit more attractive who has money. She doesn't have to lay under this lob. I mean, come on, Aoki. You have better options than this. Now, I wanna get into this whole beef between Glorilla and JT. It all started when Glorilla name dropped JT on one of her songs, A'ight, okay? Now, in her song, A'ight, she said, I just pray one day the bad bees will come together. 
because Cardi and Nicki on a track would break some effing records. Me and JT ain't the best of friends, but we ain't beefing. And there was a rumor that Glorilla got into it with JT. In fact, Armand Wiggins was the one who actually spilt this tea first. At the VMAs, JT and Glorilla were backstage. Oh no, Glorilla wanted to speak to or tried to speak to JT. And JT snubbed her off, like in a very nasty, catty way, like rolled her eyes at her and ignored her. And Glorilla went in to try to speak and kind of give her a hug. And JT kind of gave like, you know, like very one of them. And Glorilla wasn't feeling that. For one person, they're saying like, you know, Glorilla threw a drink at JT. Another person says she threw a purse and it hit JT. Now, Glorilla actually liked a tweet confirming that she threw a purse at her. So this T actually was correct. Now, I do wonder why there was even any tension between them in the first place, because they were cool at one point. In fact, JT said that Glorilla was in her DMs asking her to be on the remix to her hit song FNF. She was begging JT to be on the remix. Meanwhile, Saweetie already had a remix with her. In fact, she flew her and her friends out, bought them wigs, bought them outfits, filmed the whole video. But Glorilla flaked on Saweetie and did the remix with JT and Lotto instead. It's just something so beautiful, like seeing a woman who's coming up. Yeah. So I saw FNF and I was like, I gotta meet her. Flew her to LA, we cut it, shot the video, and I had a really good time with Glorilla. When we was in the studio, Sweetie said, yes, you know, she was so sweet. She was such a good hearted person. Like, I fucking love Sweetie forever, love her. We went to the store because Sweetie said, she buy all, she was like, I'm buying all y'all, we anything y'all want. I was still broke at the time. So, the Balenciaga outfit I first had on when I posted and it popped out, Sweetie bought all this shit for all of us. She bought our wigs, our wigs were like $3,000, $4,000. When I look back on this, I kind of feel like Glorilla did use Saweetie because I don't think she had any real intention on working with her. Yeah, they filmed the video, but Glorilla was in JT's DMs begging her to be on the remix. So she tossed Saweetie aside for JT, which is kind of messed up. But after the whole FNF remix, JT and Glorilla fell out. And JT said this, she said, I honestly thought Glow was a real B man, but she not. She caused all that ish with FNF Remix too. Came in the game messy and phony, ready to switch on your homies too. Had to jump back on the roof. Now this probably gives more context to why JT was acting stank towards Glorilla at that award show. I also think that JT was a bit bothered over Glorilla's Tomorrow 2 song with Cardi because in the song, Cardi threw subs at JT and said, hi, that's why my friend effed on your man. And there were rumors that JT's boyfriend Uzi cheated on her with Cardi's friend Star Brim. So I think JT was bothered by that whole thing and she was over Glorilla. So I can imagine that she wasn't feeling it when Glorilla tried to talk to her. But Glorilla didn't appreciate JT's stank attitude and she smacked her with her purse. <laughs> but JT is still denying that she slapped her. She said, I been said she didn't. She the one who went radio silent, played into it, released a song about slapping rap bees. Now it's female unity, corny. And Glorilla responded and said, oh, shut your dumb self up and fix those ugly wigs. I said, it ain't no beef. You the one with the secret animosity. JT said, ugly shouldn't leave your mouth ever, Joe. You look like you were born feet first. Don't mention me, secret animosity, why? And when someone asked who started the rumor and why Glow didn't clear it up to begin with, she said, I guess she was waiting on her tape to address it. And who gonna clear up going viral for slapping someone when the whole hood believed it? It was on brand. And Glorilla said, I mentioned your name to clear the air. You wanted me to say I didn't slap you, but I hit you with a purse instead? Scary girl. Don't make me pop up at one of those backyard barbecue shows you doing. You feeling a way about slapping rat bees and making bell o Guess that last run in had you thinking you the only B I touched. JT posted this, OMG, you are a liar. B, you didn't hit me with nothing, fanned out B. You approached me sounding like an old beat up box Chevy. What up, grang? <laughs> Glorilla said inmate 0983 was taking off her shoes like she was going to get to me. Didn't know if she was trying to get active or get sturdy. Lying about getting in touch is crazy. Whew, not her calling out her inmate number. And then JT said fake street be always bringing up jail, but was just crying about how you ain't have a bed until you was 15 years old and sleeping in hotels. I'm confused. Are you street or just poor? Here we go. 
Glorilla said, yeah, you slower than me. <laughs> I'm done arguing. Get up with me in real life. I don't do the internet. You gonna win every time. I already heard you going broke anyway. Woo. JT posted a collage of her mug shots and then said pending. So she said the next time she gets arrested, she going to jail for putting hands on Glorilla. <laughs> Glorilla then said them mug shots is from you stealing, not fighting B. Shut the F up. Ooh, child. JT said the last one will be from me poking holes in you like the air mattresses you were sleeping on. Oh no, not you threatening to shoot her JT, no. Glorilla said, yo, comeback's weak. Just stop, boo. It's okay. I won. Then Glorilla came back and posted this picture of JT in her wig. And she said, you could get your wig turned like Effie. <laughs> JT said, I wore my wig like this on purpose. And so we didn't have to buy it. Slow swagless B who wears sports bras and ski masks should never speak on a bad B. Fish face. <laughs> oh my God. These insults are just too much. And she said, I thought you won. I stopped, I was being generous, letting you promote that whack project that nobody gives a F about and nobody asks for. You just be doing stuff. Work on your craft, soften your voice. Everything ain't gotta be hard like your life. Ooh, be your ugly no sex appeal got dragged for trying to be seductive at the award show, crying to your label cause you was tired of crump dancing. You are a glock toting pit bull that need to stay in her G Fazos. You're not a Cinderella. You're not even a stepsister B. This is rootless. This is brutal, 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 brutal. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I'm not taking any sides here. I'm not even condoning any of this. Even though some of the insults and jokes were funny, I don't like to see them getting into it like this. And I can kind of see the play here. I do think Glorilla instigated some of this to get more publicity. And unfortunately, JT fell into the trap. JT is highly reactive and she lets things get under her skin very easily. And that's something that JT really needs to work on because sometimes being unbothered actually works in her favor. And in this case, she could have ignored what Glorilla said because Glorilla was trying to stir up drama to get promo for her album. And JT knows it too, but she just couldn't control herself. And she allowed herself to get used. Now, while JT and Glorilla were going back and forth, Saweetie liked this post of JT and a lot of people thought that Saweetie was taking JT's side. Saweetie said, my notie's blowing up, what I do? And someone says, sister, you accidentally supported something in the middle of a fight. And she said, who I'm fighting? So either Saweetie was acting clueless or she knew what she was doing. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she probably wasn't aware of what was going on, but some people aren't buying it. They feel like she knew what was going on and she's taking JT's side because she apparently feels a way about Glorilla flaking on her with that whole FNF remix. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, the last time I saw Saweetie and Glorilla together, they seemed to be cool. I mean, they had a positive interaction backstage at the Billboard Women in Music, and this happened this year. So I don't think Saweetie is bothered by it anymore. I think she's moved past it, and I don't think she has any issue with Glorilla. Also, Saweetie is cool with JT as well. So. I could see that she probably innocently liked a post, but the timing was pretty off. And so now people are saying that Saweetie is shading Glorilla, but I don't think that's the case. And I could be wrong, but I just don't think that's the case. Anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.